around here for longer than approximately two seconds, you're probably well aware that I have a slight obsession with Doc Martens. I wanted to make this video to show you my entire collection as well as give you some information and styling tips about them. I'm also going to show you some of the shoes I have that are not Docs. Believe it or not, they do exist. And since I know that Doc Martens sizing can be a little bit tricky for people, I'm going to tell you my sizes in every single shoe I have to kind of give you an idea of what size you should get in the pair you want. I'm not going to go super into detail about that though since I already made an, an entire video about this, but I did want to cover it just to give you a little bit extra help. And I also have a video explaining how to break in Doc Martens if that's what you're looking for. So here's my collection. We're gonna start off with the biggest category of shoes I have, which would be boots. So this pair is the Sinclair Wanderlust, and these are one of the most beautiful shoes I have like ever laid eyes on, and as soon as I knew they existed, I just had to have them. I searched for probably like a year trying to find these in my size, and luckily I finally got them. And I'm so glad because they're just so pretty. I love how this pretty canvas material and have like the cream colored sole. So I got these in a size 10, which is pretty much my usual size for Doc Martens. I like styling these with pastel colors and with neutral colors because I feel like that just matches the cream colors and the pastel colors already in the shoe. Like all Sinclairs, these actually come with zipper inserts that go in the middle of the shoe. I preferred wearing them without those, but they are still a cute option for these. I don't really have a favorite pair because I really love all the shoes I have so much and I wear them all so much, but if I had to choose a few favorites, this would definitely be in the top three. This next pair is the Blue Rub Off Leather Jadens. These actually have thinner leather than the black Jadens, which made them super easy to break in, and when I originally got them, only the toes and the heels were this blue color, but it was pretty faint and you couldn't really notice the blue unless you were looking at them in direct sunlight. So what I did was I used rubbing alcohol on a cotton ball and I just scrubbed around the body of the shoe to reveal more blue. So I customized them to be completely blue around the entire shoe. I'm not somebody who owns a lot of bright colors. I wear more pastels and neutral colors. I like wearing an outfit that's more like black and white, maybe like some blue jeans, and then throwing on these to add a pop of color. Another thing I really like about just Jadens in general is how they have the zipper because I am extremely lazy and I don't like completely lacing and unlacing my shoes every time I want to put them on. You literally just zip them on and off and it's completely secure whenever you're wearing them. The next pair I have is the White Glitter Mollies. I can't even like express my love for these shoes and I'm absolutely going to wear these to my wedding one day. They're so gorgeous and I love how in the light the white glitter kind of turns a little bit more pink and iridescent. When I originally got these, they just had like normal white laces on them, but I replaced them for these white ribbon laces, which I'll link below, because I think it just adds to the whole like princessy vibe for them, and I love the contrast of like the silk ribbon with the hard textured glitter. One thing I like about these shoes is how versatile they are, even though they are such like a unique shoe. For example, I wore these with my homecoming dress and they looked great, but I also wear them with like a pair of blue Levi's and a black t-shirt and they still look amazing. I also have these in a size 10. My one pet peeve about these is the fact that they're white, so they do get dirty often, but one way you can fix that is by using a magic eraser and rubbing alcohol to get any of the stains on there. The next pair I have is actually my first pair I ever got and they are the black 1460s. I have these in a size US 10. I got these about two, two and a half years ago. I feel like this is a great starter shoe for Docs because they just go with everything from maxi dresses to just a t-shirt and shorts. I will say I don't really wear these that often just because I do prefer a platform shoe. So I kind of wish I had gotten the Jaden for my first pair, but I can't bring myself to get rid of them because they're the root of my addiction and I still love them. These are the red vegan Jadens. I think this was the second or third pair I got, I can't really remember, but I bought them secondhand. I don't really agree with buying at least Doc Martens vegan leather because in reality it's just plastic. There are all kinds of different leather substitutes that they could have used, but instead they chose to make it this like cheap plastic that is not near the same quality as normal leather, and producing that does not have the best effects on our environment, so I just prefer to buy vegan leather secondhand. I wear these boots a lot because they have the zipper on them, so they just zip on and off, and I think they're super easy to just throw on and go somewhere quick. And I also have these in a size 10. These are my Sinclair boots. I actually got these right after I got the Vegan Jadens, because I realized how much I loved the platform style and I wanted to get another pair that had the platform on it. These also come with a zipper insert like the Sinclair Wanderlust do, but I took it out because I just prefer them to be laced regularly like this. These are super versatile and easy to style. 
I don't wear these super often because they don't have the zippers and they're harder to get on. And like I said before, I'm lazy and really don't want to completely lace and unlace my shoes to wear them. But whenever I do put them on, I don't regret it because the leather makes them super comfy and I don't even remember having to break these in at all. The next pair I have is the X-Girl Jaden Matte. This pair is also probably in my top three favorite pairs because I just love the silhouette of them. I just really think the canvas and the Jaden shape look so good together. They're also super easy to style and I love the max platform on them. Another thing I love about these shoes is I think they're great to switch out the laces on. As you can see, I switched mine out for these green laces, but I've seen people switch them out for pink, blue, and white, and they all look so good on these shoes. I also have these in a size US 10. This next pair is the Jaden Max Oxblood. This is another pair that has the max platform as well as the zipper, which I love. I love how these have the silver grommet details on them, as well as these metal details here. I love the color of these, and even though it is red, I think it's very easy to style because it is so dark. These have a super soft leather, which in my opinion makes them super easy to break in. Like, I didn't have any problems at all with these. I thought they were so comfy from the beginning. I switched out the normal black laces for these ribbon laces because I thought it added a nice little detail. I also have these in a size US 10. This pair is the Arcadia Chelsea. This is actually my newest pair and I had been looking for these for a really long time and I finally was able to find them. They are a size US 9 even though I usually would wear a 10 in Chelsea's because that's all I could find and I honestly didn't even care that they were a size too small because I just wanted to have these so bad. They are a tiny bit tight but I can tell as I'm breaking them in that they're going to be fine. Like the Blue Jadens, I used rubbing alcohol and a cotton ball to expose more of the red color on the toes and the heels. I really like these shoes and honestly I think dark red is really easy to style just like black is. And also like the Blue Jadens, they add a pop of color with the bright red detail on them, which is really nice for kind of spicing up a neutral outfit. My last pair in this category is the Church Monkey Quads. I'm going to be honest, when I first saw these I thought they were absolutely hideous. But after seeing them on Instagram all the time, I just began to love them and now that I actually own them, I'm just so obsessed with them. They're just such a unique shoe and I just love all the stitching details and the cut of them. I originally had these in a size US 10, but I had to sell them and get a size 9 because they were too big. So the next category of shoes I have is Oxfords. These are the 1461 quads. You've probably seen people wearing these around because I feel like they're a very popular style. Because they're so versatile, this is another pair that's just a go-to for me because whenever I need to go somewhere quick, I just slip these on with any outfit I'm wearing and they look good. I actually have these in a size US 9. I had them in a 10 for the longest time, but whenever I'd walk, the back would be loose and it would kind of dig into my heel every time I took a step down. And after having them for like a year, I finally realized it was because I had the wrong size. So I switched the 10s out for a 9 and they're perfectly fine now. This next pair is the Bethans. This is another pair that I thought was kind of ugly when I first saw them, but I decided to get a pair of these in my size to sell, and I tried them on, and I literally like fell in love and couldn't bring myself to sell them. I originally had them in a 10, but just like the 1461 quads, I had to repurchase them in a 9 because they were too big. Even though they are smooth leather, I actually found them super easy to break in and comfy from the start. I find these super easy to slip on and style just like the 1461 quads, but I can justify having both because I like how this shoe kind of shows off any fun socks you're wearing. And I feel like they are a little bit more casual than the 1461 quads, just because they feel a little bit sandal-esque, in my opinion, compared to the 1461s, which just feel like men's dress shoes. Next is one of my prized possessions, and this is a collaboration between Doc Martens and Marc Jacobs. They're the Heaven Crocskin Oxfords. I love the details on these. Like, the crocodile skin is so beautiful, and mixed with the stitching and the little flower eyelets, is just such a unique and beautiful shoe. The platform is also really cool. This is the same platform as on the Audrix. It's like a lightweight platform and a little bit more chunky than the typical platform. I actually have these in a size 10, but they are too big. And the reason I haven't got a new one is because they were a limited edition collab and I haven't been able to find a pair my size. So to kind of help with that, I have these little heel pads on them which basically add another layer between my foot and the shoe to kind of keep them from slipping off. Those pads are also great if the heel is bothering you when you're breaking them in. And I'll link where you can get those below too. And also these are one of the other shoes in my top three favorite Doc Martens. 
So this pair is the Keith Haring 1461s. I've had these for a super long time. I got them when they originally came out on the website. And I'm not gonna lie, it was actually really hard for me to purchase these because they're just so unique. And, and at the time, I had never owned anything like this before. But I am so glad I got them. And I think they're just so perfect. Even though the pattern's super busy, I still think it's easy to style because it's black and white. I have these in a size 10. And even though the platform Oxfords, I had to get a size 9 in, these are actually a perfect fit in a 10 because I think that the normal 1461s fit more true to size than the others. And this is my last pair of Oxfords. I'm honestly not really sure what the name of these are because on the tag it's just a number, but I call them the 1461 Floral Wingtip Oxfords. These are like the perfect cottagecore shoes and have the prettiest flower details. I love the wingtip style and the fact that it's like this beautiful cream color with pastel flowers. It just makes it even more beautiful. They have kind of an antique look to them, just with the wingtip style of the shoe mixed with the floral pattern having like a cracked look to them, and I honestly love it. I also have these in a size 10. The next category is sneakers. This category is obviously very small because I only have two pairs, but I still wanted to show you them because I think the ones I do have are cute. This pair is just your classic Air Force Ones. I mean, I'm sure you've seen these literally everywhere in your life. I honestly don't find them that comfortable. The reason I have them is because sometimes I just want to dress down an outfit, which is something you can't really do with dogs since they are a little bit more of a dressy shoe. I also switched out the laces for these gingham ones, and I think it's a really nice, unique touch. This is the other pair I have, and they're called the Ghost Green Jordan 1 Lows. I actually won these on the sneakers app, and I was so happy because it was one of the first pairs I've ever won on there, which if you've ever tried to win something on the app, you know it is near impossible. But I really like these because they're super comfortable, and they're kind of just my shoes for physical activity, or like if I'm going to go outside and don't want to get my docks dirty. I really like these because I love the light green color mixed with the white and pink, and it has this really cool checker detail on the top tongue, which also just adds like a really clean design to them. The next category of shoes I have are heels. And I know I said earlier that I'd try to narrow down my Doc Martens into a top three, but when I did that I was forgetting I had these, which are my actual children. These are the Butterscotch Leonas, and this is one of my favorite pairs ever to exist. As you can see, I switched out the black laces on them for cream ribbons, which I think looks really nice with the Butterscotch leather and makes them really pretty. This pair is super easy to style, and I like wearing them with neutral colors. Even though they are heels, I find them super comfortable because it has a very big platform block heel as well as a platform on the rest of the shoe that makes them super easy to walk in. And the leather is very soft and comfortable, and I didn't really have to break them in at all. I have these in a size 10. I also have these white slingback heels. The material in these is a little bit shiny, and I really like it. I think it looks super pretty. Although I do like wearing these with dresses and skirts and kind of girly outfits, I also really like pairing them with more masculine outfits because I really like the contrast between like a wide-fitting, structured, neutral material with these really delicate and shiny heels. This pair is also a kind of slingback heel style. They have like this nude patent leather and then black toe caps with a fabric-y material. These are a really great neutral shoe. Like the last pair, I think they can be styled with skirts and dresses as well as pants. I have these in a size US 9. So these are some cream heel boots with this black block heel. And they also have this really cool metal front detailing. These are super easy to style and the actual faux leather on them is super comfy because it's very soft and it kind of feels like a sock when you're wearing them. But my one beef with them is because of the block heel, they are kind of noisy when I wear them, which I feel like can be expected from shoes like this. I'm just not super used to it since the shoes I usually wear don't sound like that, but I do still wear them and love them because I think they're so pretty. I have these in a US 10. This is my last pair of heels and I am so obsessed with them. So actually before I realized these existed, I was looking at a dress that had the same classic white and blue renaissance print, but I decided not to get it because I thought it was kind of too much to have on your entire body. And I was like, this would be so much better in like a shoe form. And a couple months later, I found them in shoe form. And I'm so happy I got these because they have a thick heel which makes them super easy to walk in and they have a little bit of a platform and I just really like the silhouette of them. You can also take the strap off and just wear them without it which is another cute way to style them. I have these in a size 10 and I probably should have got a 9.5 because when I take the strap off they are a little bit loose but they still work for me and I really like them. My last category is quite expansive and that is sandals.
So I'm not really a big sandals person. I really haven't been since in elementary school when I lived in Phoenix and I would wear those platform Roxy flip-flops to school every day. So that's why I only have one pair. So these are called the Griffon Quads. I think the reason I've actually decided to get a pair of sandals was because they had the platform. They're actually surprisingly comfortable and I think they'll be very helpful this summer when I go to the beach. I actually genuinely like these, even though I'm not big on other sandals. Doc Martens sandals run pretty big and I had to get a 9 in these and they fit perfectly. I really hope you enjoyed my collection. I'm going to link all the pairs that are still available in the description, but many of the pairs I own are no longer sold. At the time of posting this video, I have a couple that I'm personally selling, so I'll link those in the description. But if you're looking for any of the other limited edition or discontinued ones, be sure to follow my Instagram where I regularly post new Doc Martens for sale. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys today, and again, thank you so much for watching.